In today's video, we have some NHL trade rumors. We're taking a look at the New York Islanders and some options they have to add to their blue line to replace Nick Letty. We also have some updates on Thomas Hurdle in San Jose that we talked a little bit about earlier in the week. The Montreal Canadiens decision is coming soon due for the offer sheet with just Barry Cock and Niemi. As well, we have some more signings to discuss as well. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of things to talk about here today. I want to start off with a few more signings. In case you missed it earlier, we did a video earlier today announcing uh, several other signings. So if there's been signings announced today that are not in this video, it's because they were already discussed earlier. But we have some more here. Uh, the previous video, we did talk about the Sabres likely going to be coming to terms with defenseman Henry Yokoharu on a three-year deal, very comparable, similar, almost identical uh, and it actually turned out to be identical to Casey Middlestat. Three years, a $2.5 million for the young defender. Um, so that's a pretty good deal. I think he and Middlestat both are going to be uh, key pieces to their future if they can continue developing. And so the team played a lot better uh, the, the last probably you know 20 games or so under Don Granato. Uh, hopefully they can continue to build off that. It's probably going to be a rough year, especially with the Eichel situation still looming over the team and uncertainty and all that, but they do have a lot of youth that are you know, expected to take on bigger roles this year. They have a new coach in Granado who had some progress last year, and hopefully they can continue to build off that. And we also saw Carter Rowney get a one-year deal from the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, I haven't been able to confirm the amount, but I would imagine that's somewhere near league minimum or definitely under a million dollars. Uh, Rowney's basically spent the last number of years between Anaheim and Pittsburgh. Pretty solid, hard-working bottom six guy. Not going to get a whole lot of offense out of him, but he can kill penalties uh, and certainly play a regular shift down there. So a veteran guy who's a hard-working, you know, good role model in that sense, good in the locker room, popular teammate, that type of thing uh, for a rebuilding Red Wings team. Uh, certainly should be a decent fit there. Uh, we also saw Louis Domingue actually get a contract with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, he's bounced around a bit in recent years. Uh, he goes to Pittsburgh on a one-year two-way deal, which will pay him league minimum $750,000 at the NHL level. Uh, Domingue's a very capable backup goalie, I think. Uh, he doesn't get a lot of options here in the last couple of years. He hasn't really played a ton with all the COVID stuff and the, the, you know, the shortened seasons and all that. Uh, he's really not played a ton of hockey. Uh, Pittsburgh has been long rumored to be making changes between the pipes, but they didn't end up doing anything this offseason. I think after uh, Burke and Hextall got into their jobs last year in Pittsburgh, uh, Tristan Jerry seemed to play better, but then didn't, didn't have a great playoff. So I'm a little surprised they're coming back with the same tandem, but having Deming around will be an extra third uh, option, especially if they do end up making a trade. Uh, this gives them a little bit more depth at the position. So uh, certainly not a bad move on that front. We also got confirmation as well that Jack Johnson is making another attempt at the NHL after uh, having some rough years recently, getting bought out by the Penguins and kind of bouncing around a bit. Uh, he's go going to camp with the Avalanche on a professional tryout agreement. So we'll see if that can turn into a contract for Johnson or not. Uh, they do have a pretty solid blue line. Probably at best, I would say, if they offer him anything, it's probably going to have to be a two-way deal. But time will tell how things go with Johnson. And I would suspect here in the coming days that we will likely hear about a lot more uh, veteran guys getting camp invites on PTOs. Uh, but, you know, having to earn their contracts to see how things go in camp before they sign on the dotted line and get any kind of security. We also got word today that the founder of Cap Friendly, the website that I know I use a ton and probably I visit more than any other website in the world uh, on a daily basis, and I know many of you probably do as well. Uh, what an awesome resource for uh, contracts and you know where teams are up with their cap situation and a whole bunch of other stuff that they've added. Uh, the founder of Cap Friendly, Dominic Zrim, has actually gotten a job with the Chicago Blackhawks. He has been given the title of Manager of Hockey Strategy. So considering what he's built with this website, with Cap Friendly, he's basically become uh, pretty well known as a CBA specialist. So he should be able to help them. Uh, what a great promotional opportunity really for him to really step up here to uh, you know, a potential long career working in the NHL. So we'll see. But I know I just wanted to congratulate him. The resource is awesome. I know he'll luckily never see this video. But on the odd chance he did, Dominic, I appreciate you very much for what you built with Cap Friendly and uh, great success 
wished in Chicago. Now, before we go further into today's video, I do want to pause for a moment and acknowledge our channel sponsor, Manscaped. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped. Of course, with Manscaped, we have a special offer here for all Top Shelf Hockey viewers where you can get 20% off in free shipping and all orders at Manscaped.com. Now, of course, Manscaped just launched a brand new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is a fantastic product. They've taken the level up here even again with the skin safe replaceable blades uh, they have it's waterproof it's wireless charging uh, has a travel lock on it uh, as well as a nice light so you don't miss what you're doing so certainly a terrific product now many people associate manscape with their trimmers which is certainly uh, kind of their top product but they do have a lot of other great options as well uh, including what they call the weed whacker which is another trimmer for your ears and nose and they have a variety of deodorants and sprays as well which also keep you fresh in are terrific as well so certainly manscape has a lot to offer and we certainly highly recommend all of their products so check out manscape.com and use promo code TSH for 20% off and free shipping. So I also want to quickly announce as well that we do have another bit of a surprise promo on the merchandise. Uh, anything Top Shelf Hockey in the store is going to be 10% off from now until September the 7th at midnight Eastern time. And this is actually courtesy of the merch company themselves. Spring just sent me an email just a earlier today with a, uh, a surprise promo. So obviously this is a, a little bit different. I can certainly uh, from time to time offer discounts on my own accord, uh, but they have chosen to do this occasionally here as well, uh, which is a great thing. It's only 10% off, but hey, every little bit helps, uh, especially right now. Basically the promo we just ran was extremely successful uh, in the month of August. I basically did for uh, US citizens free shipping and 10% off for Canadian residents. Uh, and we had, our, like I said, a record-setting month for Top Shelf Hockey merchandise. Uh, we've had orders shipped to uh, several Canadian provinces, several U.S. states. We even had an order shipped to Japan recently. Uh, actually, I don't think it's shipped yet. It was just placed in the last couple of days here. Uh, so we're getting uh, you know, orders from all over the place, which is phenomenal. I greatly appreciate your support. Uh, the amount of super thanks as well continues to roll in, uh, which is like a tip jar opp opportunity for viewers to uh, you know make a small donation to say thanks for your hard work. So, uh, that's been going well. So again, just want to appreciate your, all your support. You would have seen already on the screen here the promo code for this uh, promotion on the merchandise is sunset. So this will be in the video here on the screen. You'll see that. I will also post it in the community tab just in case you want to come back to it sometime here over the next few days while this promotion is running in case you forgot the code or whatever but promo code sunset on the top shelf hockey merch store will get you 10 percent off between now and midnight eastern on september the 7th now back into today's video we want to talk about a few other things here in the rumor mill uh one we talked about a bit yesterday and that's uh, sharks forward tomas hurdle who's uh you know kind of rumored to possibly be on the trade block but not a guarantee. There's also some talk that he may be, you know, open and uh, willing to move on from San Jose because of all the Evander Kane drama and just the way the team has gone. And now today uh, I saw an article in The Athletic uh, referring to an interview he conducted over in the Czech Republic, uh, kind of, you know, sort of indicating here and confirming the fact that he's not super happy, not really sure what the future holds. Didn't really indicate for sure that uh, a trade was being worked on. Uh, he said that you know any trade speculation was basically coming from the media, but I think the media is taking everything else they know about the situation and kind of putting two and two together that it is a possibility. He did say, though, that he's not uh, really sure what his future holds, that he doesn't know if he's going to end up on another team uh, or not. That at this point, he's not even sure if San Jose wants him back because he's entering the final year of his contract, so he'd have to extend beyond this year. He doesn't know if they're interested in that. There's been no conversations about an extension. Uh, and he said that if he does move on, the main things he's looking for is uh, an opportunity to win. He wants to be on a, a competitive environment where he has a chance at a Stanley Cup. He said his early days in San Jose were phenomenal. They were you know, super competitive, went to the Cup final, and just were always in the playoffs in the thick of things. And lately he said their situation is incredibly different. Uh, the team's in a tough spot with uh, you know, other things they're dealing with, which is like the Kane stuff and, and the cap and everything else. And that you know maybe uh, you know it, it doesn't know what the future holds. So he's not going to come out and say he wants to be moved or anything. He didn't say anything really negative here, but it certainly leads us to think that you know I think there is a real possibility here that there is more to the rumors that have been uh, discussed recently by NHL reporters and insiders about his 
future with the Sharks. As I mentioned yesterday, there's a variety of teams that makes a ton of sense for him. I know there was also another article um, from a Rangers reporter indicating that uh, where the Rangers have been in the mix to upgrade their center position, maybe even considering moving Ryan Strom, that he could be a good fit there as well. Yesterday, we referenced teams like the Boston Bruins would be a good fit. Uh, the, the Ottawa Senators have been in the mix for a veteran center to a degree, maybe even Calgary. Uh, you know, we looked at a few other teams too, but the Rangers, according to the reports I read, could be an interested party. But of course, many still feel the Rangers are focused on Eichel. But of course, we haven't really heard much on that situation here recently either. So we'll have to see. But Tomas Hurdle's future in San Jose is at the least certainly questionable it's fair to say and if the sharks have a down season like many suspect and he does uh you know not work out an extension wouldn't be surprising if hurdle is one of the bigger names available at the nhl trade deadline if not sooner depending on when they want to make a move now i also want to touch on quickly the montreal canadians situation here with just perry cock and the emmy uh they do have a deadline coming up here uh, in less than 48 hours now as i record this video uh, on Thursday evening, uh, they're 5 o'clock Eastern time, I believe, is a cutoff on Saturday for an announcement to be made on their decision on this offer sheet from the Carolina Hurricanes. I know many still feel that uh, Bergevin is shopping the compensation around, trying to determine if another sentiment might be able to be obtained. I've seen different op of opinions out there. Many feel that a trade should be made to replace them, but there's some that feel that maybe they really shouldn't and they should hang on to this compensation the next year's draft is a very deep draft. Maybe they should try to promote more internally. Uh, and I also saw an article from Eric Engels uh, and from Sportsnet talking about the fact that um, they really should focus on getting Nick Suzuki signed because of anything else that could happen this time next year. I mean, the Suzuki, a whole different situation than Cock and the Emmy. Uh, Suzuki's a clear-cut number one center who I think the team really has a lot more faith in and it would be more willing to sign long-term and pay the big money to. And at this point, they can't take the chance that Carolina or any other team isn't going to attack them again next season after what just transpired here. I mean, we also had word as well from the Carolina perspective that this offer sheet was very much uh, from rate right from owner Tom Dundon, uh, that they were obviously in trade talks with the Habs around Cock and Niemi, and that Montreal wasn't really all that interested in trading him um, so they just said, screw it, we're going to do the offer sheet. We really like this player. We, uh, to a degree, I think they did want some revenge, but I don't think they would have tried to be revengeful or vengeful here if uh, they didn't really like the player at the end of the day. Uh, so they went the offer sheet route, but will Tom Dundon leave it at that and say, okay, it's spades, it's spade, move on, or will they attack Nick Suzuki next year? Ryan Suzuki, his brothers in the Carolina organization, Obviously, the Carolina's cap situation is going to be greatly impacted, and it's a whole other situation. And I'm not suggesting that they're going to do that for sure. But still, like when you when you've been attacked, your your first instinct should be to go like in the protection mode here and kind of protect the house a little bit. And Nick Suzuki is a big part of that house, so it makes sense why they would try to get an extension done sooner than later. Strictly from their own perspective, it's completely makes more sense anyway because the way he's been going, he's probably going to have an even bigger year and continue to develop even more and it's just going to push up the amount they're going to have to pay him so to me i would get ahead of it as well for that reason alone and not then you don't have to worry about uh any offer sheets or anything else coming your way uh from there so we'll see what bergevin and the habs do but we should have word here soon on the offer sheet now lastly here i want to touch on the new york islanders now now, we know we saw a flurry of uh, signings finally announced from the very secretive Islanders and Lamarillo uh, just in the last day or so here. They finally confirmed Beauvillier, Sorokin, Paul Mary, and Sezikis. Many are wondering, well, what about Zach Parise? And there was confirm confirmation made. I believe it was Jesse Pierce who uh, covers the Wild uh, and has a podcast as well uh, who uh, had asked Parise because uh, he was – playing in the Beauty League in Minnesota, and I believe she got a comment from him uh, saying that, yes, indeed, he has come to terms and signed with the Islanders. The contract's not yet registered, so we don't know the exact terms. I would imagine it's probably one of those 35-plus contracts where it's a, a small salary uh, with potential bonus opportunities, uh, like games played or goals scored or something like that, where they could end up in a, you know impacting your cap next year, depending on what bonuses he does end up achieving but even though it's not official from the islanders according to parise it is a done deal and he will be joining the islanders this 
uh, this fall here when training camp gets underway, which not a shocker, but nice to know for sure from somebody. Uh, now, but the other thing, too, that I want to talk about the Islanders was an uh, article from Arthur Staple in The Athletic talking about he, how he believes that even with the Parise signing not announced yet, that they're not completely done yet. Uh, and this is going to be a little bit tricky for them because obviously they're kind of running out of cap space after all those signings. They only had, I think it was about 2.2 or 3 million left. And that's through the LTIR by placing the Boychuk contract on long-term injury reserve. So when you factor that in and a little bit of that money having to go to Parise, let's say he signed, I don't know, for uh, 900,000 or a million bucks or something like that, then you're down to like one point something million dollars. And that's not very much. You're not going to add a top four defenseman with that kind of money. So clearly something would have to be moved out. So this article from Arthur Staple references a few defensemen that he feels would be a good fit and possibly reasonable that uh, they could target. They target uh, Hampus Lindholm in Anaheim in this article, Matthias Ekholm in Nashville, and he references some options with the Seattle Kraken. Personally, I don't think Ekholm is going to be traded. I think that there's a really good chance he gets extended with the Predators. Uh, I don't think David Poyle is interested in tearing things down any further unless he could find a deal for Johansson or Duchesne, which is likely not going to happen. Uh, and then at that point, I think like they're trying to reset. I don't think Nashville really thinks they need to rebuild. I think they kind of do, but I don't think they concur with me on that uh, statement. So uh, I think they're going to likely try to keep Ekholm. Lindholm, on the other hand, I could see possibly being made available by the Ducks. So that, to me, would make sense. Uh, you got to remember here as well, according to this article, that there uh, there's some other guys that are rumored to be bringing back too, but they're players who could be on uh, you know contracts that could be buried in the minors, players that will compete for like the 13th forward spot. So it's I believe that Michael Dal Cole and Travis Zajac are both returning on one-year contracts. So they're going to have an abundance of players at the forward position. So it leads me to think some guys like Kiefer Bellows and uh, Koivula very well could be trade chips if they want to use some younger assets to acquire a defenseman to replace the minutes that Nick Letty used to log for them, essentially. Like, that's a, a big piece. They had to move Letty for the cap space, and now they're trying to figure out how to replace those minutes. You know, between Lou and Barry Trotz, they're likely not overly fond of injecting a young defenseman that high in the lineup. They really like to take their time with their prospects. Uh, I would imagine Noah Dobson gets a bigger role more minutes this year, but uh, that's not the level they're going to place him in just yet. You've got some younger defensemen like uh, Samuel Boldu, for example. Uh, I don't see them injecting him up that high in the lineup right away either. Um, same thing with uh, like Sebastian Ajo. Uh, really, like they don't really have anybody, in my opinion, internally. They they can just kind of promote and step up into that role. So one of these other guys would make more sense, like Hampus Lindholm and Anaheim, or if they talk to Seattle. To me, the main player that makes the most sense, and I don't really have any kind of uh, reason to think for sure that they're going to trade them, but that would be Vince Dunn. Uh, if looking at the Seattle uh, blue line, I mean, of all the guys they have there, like uh, to me, they're not likely not trading Alexiak or Giordano, um, you know, or uh, Larson, who they signed. So you're looking at, you know, some other guys like a Vince Dunn, maybe a Carson Soucy, you know, like they have like the Fleury brothers who they probably don't want to move. Like there's just not a ton of, you know, real solid top four guys that are good puck movers. So Dunn would be the main player if they're going to do it. They signed him to a two-year deal at $4 million a year. So I would think they would prefer to keep Vince Dunn. But again, if you're going to talk to them, that would make the most sense on who to target. But like I said, some of these young players are the players, like that I mentioned on the Islanders, like Bellows and Coyville, that would likely be your main trade chips. But they're going to likely have to move out somebody that makes a decent amount of money to make the cap work. So there had been rumored about a guy like Josh Bailey before. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. The Islanders are likely not going into the season with what they have right now. I can see them pushing real hard to add a defenseman. It's just a matter of how creative they can be to get it done. I think they will address that before they try to address adding another goal scorer. So I think that's a spot where they have enough youth that they can, between bringing back Paul Mary trying to elevate Wallstrom, and they're going to try to get those extra goals internally. And yet, you know, because there was a lot of talk about Tarasenko, I'm not entirely convinced that's going to happen. I don't think the odds are good at this point. So to me, if they're going to make any additions, it's likely on the blue line. The goal scorer is going to have to wait, see what they have internally. Maybe they can add it to the deadline if their uh, things are working out and they're having another solid year before they go into the playoffs. So let me know 
Your thoughts on everything discussed here today down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We will keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all the 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.